Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumant Singh, topping our newscast. As we reported, Governor Kenneth Mapp's financial team testified Monday before the Senate, kicking off a series of budget hearings that's expected to last weeks. Senators took the opportunity while they had the entire financial team with them to raise a variety of concerns, some of which we reported on Monday. News 2's April Knight has more of those concerns. Lawmakers raised quite a few concerns when Governor Mapp's financial team testified before them on the 2016 budget, including why the team thinks the government is spending $2 million more on electric bills when WAPA has projected a 30% drop in energy costs. That amount just has to be wrong. If that amount is right, something is wrong um, with the energy system. Senators also touched on the hiring of consultants to help out the local tax authority. The administration is making wide budget cuts in an effort to reduce the deficit. But the police department, the Bureau of Corrections and the two hospitals are left untouched, mainly agencies under federal scrutiny. The miscellaneous section of the budget is $161 million. That includes funding for semi-autonomous and nonprofit organizations, but it also includes monies that go toward agencies and departments that already have entire sections of the budget devoted to them. And some senators take issue with that. Where do we continue this practice of separating all these expenses? It doesn't give a true picture of each agency spending. The fiscal burden is somewhat eased by the extended higher rum cover over from the Department of Interior. Other anticipated amounts, however, are still in limbo, including the $40 million settlement agreement with Havenza. OMB's Nellen Bowery is not confident enough to include it in the 2016 budget. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. And you can follow the schedule of budget hearings per agency by checking the Senate calendar at www.legvi.org. Senate President Neville James is encouraged by news reports he's heard about a possible sale of the Hovenza refinery. James says any work or rehabilitation at the St. Croix refinery could mean a major economic hit for the territory, especially where jobs are concerned. But he wants the parties sitting at the negotiation table to provide any information they are allowed to share with the public. The legislature is not one of those entities. The executive branch would have to submit the negotiated deal to the Senate. And James said they want enough time to be able to vet any possible deal. While the results are in for the 2015 British Virgin Islands general election, voters went to the polls on Monday, and here are the people they voted to 13 seats of the Third House of Assembly. By district, the winners are 1, Andrew Foy, 2, Mitch Turnbull, 3, Julian Frazier, 4, Mark Vantapool, 5, Dolores Christopher, 6, Alvera Maduro Keynes, 7, Kendrick Pickering, 8, Marlon Penn, nine, Hubert O'Neill, and at large, we have Myron Walwyn, Daniel O'Smith, Ronnie Skelton, and Archibald Christian. Congratulations to BVI's new leaders. The VIPD is asking for your help as they search for two wanted men. Kadim Rosario is wanted for burglary second degree. Rosario is a 20-year-old Hispanic male, light complexion. Take a look at the picture there. Brown hair, brown eyes, stands at the height of five feet, weighs 130 pounds, and has a tattoo on his neck that reads the name Diane. Rosario is known to frequent the Paradise Mill Apartments in Frederickstead. Also, Akeem Herbert is wanted for first-degree burglary, grand larceny, aggravated assault, and battery. Herbert is 24-year-old black male, dark brown complexion, brown eyes with black dreadlocks, weighs 230 pounds, stands at the height of six feet, Herbert is known to frequent the D. Hamilton Jackson, Ruby Rouse Apartments in Christiansted, and Walter I. M. Hodge Housing Community, Safarelli in Frederickstead. Call Detective Gregory Chowlery at 340-712-6026-911 or Crime Stoppers. Well, residents worked together to clean up Smith Bay on Saturday, and in the end, 15 huge bags of trash. Here's a before and after and all the people involved. Sixth grade teacher, Ms. Zellner of Bowski Elementary School, 14 students, including officers Roy Chesterfield and Lisa Samuel, all pitched in to clear up 
the area. Kudos to, to all of you. Coral Wall employees also joined in the cleanup and cleaned up the Koki Point and Coral Wall area on Sunday. Meanwhile, the VI Waste Management Authority advises St. Thomas residents that the Solid Waste Disposal Site, which is located in Smith Bay, adjacent to the future home of Margaritaville Hotel, is now relocated east of the current location that, that was affected since Monday, June 8th. The site has been identified as the future home of the Smith Bay Convenience Center. Meanwhile, Paradise Covenant Ministries hosted a community meeting last Thursday. Members discussed the impact of the Brookman Road construction on local businesses and residents. Many residents were in attendance and aired their concerns as well as local business owners to those present, which included public works, island roads, construction, and more. Construction is underway. However, heavy rains recently had disrupted the construction uh, deadline and those who traverse in the area. The Committee on Health, Hospital and Human Services, chaired by Senator Kurt Viola, received a status update on mental health issues from public health officials last Friday at the Legislative Hall, or will be at the Legislative Hall. Representatives included Dr. Kendall Griffith, CEO of the Wallowee Hospital and Medical Center, Doris Plaskett, Chief Nursing Officer of Schneider Regional Medical Center. Now, the full day discussion touched on establishing a protocol to ensure communication between agencies, constructing a long-term care facility, providing follow-up care once patients are released, and drafting second-chance legislation that could lead to receipt of additional federal funds. Senator Gene Ford stated, he stated that he's disgusted upon seeing photos of food that was allegedly being served to public school students in the territory as part of the school lunch program. The senator described a photo showing two slices of bread with a slice of cheese and carrots as a meal. The senator said he reached out to the insula superintendent and the director of the school lunch program. Ford said he'll get an explanation from education officials during the upcoming June 18th hearing of the committee he chairs education and workforce development. Well, next week, the results of a parental satisfaction survey will be released in both districts. The State Office of Special Education will be holding presentations at both UVI campuses to explain those results. Parents and caretakers of students who receive special education and related services should attend these meetings. The purpose of the survey was to collect data in one of 20 areas on the state performance plan. The results will be used to help improve services for local students with disabilities. The St. Croix presentation, Tuesday, June 16th, and the St. Thomas presentation will be held Wednesday, June 17th. Both meetings begin at 6 p.m. Well, Monday was the start of the 7th Annual Governor's Summer Reading Challenge. Last week, educational officials visited St. Thomas schools to announce the launch. And this week, officials were on St. Croix distributing books to the students. News News' Erica Parsons has more. The second graders from the Charles H. Emanuel Elementary School are ready for the Governor's Summer Reading Challenge. So how many of you plan to read more than 15 books? Good. Education officials distributed books from this summer's challenge to the Charles H. students Tuesday. They also visited the fourth graders at Claude Marco Elementary School. We are giving books to kindergarten to sixth grade. We're giving kinder to fourth two books and fifth and sixth one book. And we're also encouraging the students to read books online. So we have um, collaborated with the library and they have offered to get the students to download books from the public library's website. The national initiative was started locally by former First Lady Cecile DeYoung under the last administration. Officials say literacy is still a top priority. We decided to continue with that initiative because our main goal and the governor's main goal is to get all our students to read on grade level. The challenge is to get students from kindergarten through sixth grade in all schools to read five or more books this summer. Governor Kenneth Mapp says he wants literacy to be a prime focus all year round. Officials say after the challenge ends September 11th, there are more literacy activities planned to promote reading. All the books provided by education were written by local authors. Students who meet the challenge will be treated to a party and prizes at the end of summer, but that's not the only incentive. We want them to get lost in reading, you know, go to places that they've never been before through reading. But it might be tough to beat the enthusiastic students from Charles H., whose school has won the challenge the last three years running. Erica Parsons, News 2.
Good luck to all the students. Now students can get more information and keep track of their books by logging on to www.read5.org. Students can also visit www.virginislandspubliclibraries.org for free ebooks to complete the challenge. We'll turn our attention overseas. Dozens of officers headed into the woods on foot in upstate New York searching for two escaped inmates. Convicted killers David Sweat and Richard Matt have been missing since Saturday. There is heavy police presence outside the village of Essex, 40 miles from the prison. Authorities said two suspicious people were in the area but would not give any more detail. Over the weekend, the inmates used power tools to cut their way out of the Clinton Correctional Facility, and investigators want to know how they got them. CBS News has learned prison employee Joyce Mitchell is among those being questioned. Police say both men are extremely dangerous. Matt killed and dismembered his boss. Sweat and his accomplices shot and killed a deputy sheriff. Keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. As we can see there, the Dow and NASDAQ down. The Dow too, NASDAQ down at 7 and S&P up. Coming up on News 2 in our consumer alert, how a team of con artists ripped off colleges, students, and the government all at the same time. That's coming up. Plus, the Elena Christian Rocketry Club received a gift from a local cultural dance group. We'll have more on that donation when we come back. Welcome back. Innovative employees got the healthy treatment on Tuesday as the company held its annual wellness and health fair. Employees took advantage of various health screenings free of charge as well as chiropractic services. They could be seen going from one station to the next, having their vitals checked and weight taken. According to innovative officials, it's a gesture that employees truly appreciate. Vendors from the community that come in and share information about the services that they provide. Um, we also have um, chair massages for employees, so we have a relaxation station, which is a real big hit for our employees this year. Employees look forward to it every year. Uh, we call it our mid-year checkup. We normally do it in June, and we give them an opportunity to come in and, you know, just check, the, know their numbers, which is very important. Oh, great there. The We De Ya cultural dancers gave Elenia Junior High's Rocketry Club $500 Tuesday. The club's advisor says it comes at the right time since they're heading to Nevada this month, chosen by NASA as one of the top five aerospace schools in the nation. In the news, you see so much about youth doing, um, going astray and not doing the right thing. So when we see young people, you know, working hard and striving to do good, mm -hmm. you know, we just want to show our give our thanks and show our appreciation and commend them for the hard work that they're doing. This will be used in little over a week from now. This, this group would be going to Nevada. Elena Christian Junior High School was deemed one of the top aerospace schools in the nation. And so NASA invited us. Congratulations to those students. Now in a joint commencement ceremony over the weekend, a combined number of 101 students graduated from the Career and Tech Technology, Technology Education School and the Wheatley Skills Center. Skills Center students are normally 18 and older. CTE students are 17 to 19 years of age and come from Charlotte Molly High School and Ivana Yudorican High School. They graduated with certificates in various skill areas, including cosmetology, hotel training, auto mechanic repair, computer information systems, computer repair, electricity, electronics, health occupation, and plumbing. Congratulations to all the graduates. The last official team meeting for Relay for Life 2015 is being held this evening at the Adelita Cancran Junior High School Library. Relay for Life 2015 will take place on Saturday, June 20th at 4 p.m. Now, if there are individuals in the community who would like to participate in this year's relay but prefer not to be on the team, a $100 donation to the American Cancer Society will entitle you to a green T-shirt and welcome you to be part of the Relay for Life. For more information, you can call the American Cancer Society office. And now we have the King of the Wing winners. Here they are in the winner in the restaurant division. First place went to Tap and Still. Second place went to Rum Shandy. Third place, 
to Fatty's Bar and Grill, Taco Hell. In the non-restaurant division, first place was Surge Communications and Crown Mountain Water. Second place, St. Thomas Sports and Social Club. And third place, Soul Sisters. Now, as you know, as we mentioned, the King of the Wing contest, it was held on Saturday, June 6th at Megan's Bay. It's a fundraiser for the Nana Baby Children's Home of St. Thomas. Nearly $230,000 has been raised so far in years past. Be sure to tune in for the future check presentation to be held. Well, here's our consumer alert. Millions of students rely on loans to get them through college. But as consumer alerts found out, one group of fraudsters turned the student loan business into a money-making venture for themselves until they got caught. Here's more. The loans appeared to have been fraudulent and uh, applied for for the purposes of obtaining money from the Department of Education. The scam was simple. Either find or steal social security numbers and birth dates of unsuspecting victims and then use that information to apply for a student loan from the government. When an application was submitted, uh, it would generate a check in many cases, and that check would be mailed to the suspects. The funds were never used to pay for courses. They were deposited in personal accounts. When the checks would get cashed, the ringleaders would get most or all of the money, depending on the scenario behind it. The majority of it would go to the people running the criminal organization. Those ringleaders recruited more than 20 people who were paid to find the personal information used to apply for the loans. The criminal organization's business is to generate money. And many of these folks are very, very skilled at convincing people to do things that they would not otherwise do. Postal inspectors have some important advice. Always safeguard your personal information. You run the risk of something being done with your identifying information that you don't intend and you don't want to happen. Once you give that information to someone else, it's out there. And never give your information out to anyone who promises easy money in return. If somebody comes to you and says, I've got a deal for you, they've probably got a deal for them. And inspectors say sometimes your personal information can be compromised without your knowledge. Their advice? Get a free yearly credit report from one of the three main credit companies. Well, be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast comes your way next.